Hello, hello. So today we're going to be taking a look at the go-around procedure in the Airbus A320. So a go-around procedure is when you abort the landing for any reason. So I'm going to be talking about the various steps to take in the event that you need to abort a landing for any reason. So the first thing that you should do is look at the approach charts for the runway that you're going to be landing on because the approach charts will normally show the go around procedure or the missed approach procedure for that runway and for that airport. So currently I'm descending towards Inverness Airport as I did in the last video. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring up the approach chart for Inverness Airport on the screen just now so I can highlight a couple of things. So you can see here that we have the approach charts for runway 23 at Inverness and we can see here that we've got the loop sort of towards the north east of the airport where we basically do a big 180 degree turn, line up with the runway and land. Now if you look southwest of the airport you'll notice that we've got this dotted line here. So that dotted line represents the missed approach or the go around procedure for Inverness Airport. If we have a look at the vertical guidance picture, just underneath the main kind of map view there, you can see that we also have a dotted line there as well, which indicates the sort of the climb away from the runway, so to speak. Next to that, you have a little text box, which gives you information and instructions in writing what to do in the events that you perform a go around. So you can see there that it says to climb up to 2000 feet on the runway heading and then make a right hand turn and continue climbing up to 3000 feet and then return back towards the INS VOR station so that's the VOR at Inverness Airport and then it says at the end there or as directed so in the event you do a go around um, you may also receive instructions from air traffic control what to do they may, might tell you to you know, turn in a particular direction or climb to a certain height so uh, a go, with a go around you can either follow the what's called the published procedure which is the procedure on the approach charts like this or you'll be vectored by that I mean you'll be given instructions by air traffic control okay and here we are back in the plane so um, what I'm going to do is I'm starting a bit early I'm not actually on the approach just yet I'm just doing the big right hand turn to line up with runway 23 at Inverness Airport uh, because there's a few things I want to talk about before we actually start the approach and I want to talk about the procedure before I actually do it uh, because a lot of things are going to happen very quickly and it's going to be quite difficult for me to explain everything in detail as it's happening. So the first thing that we want to do um, after we've got the plane lined up and configured for landing is to actually, once, once we get the glide slope enabled here on the FMA, uh, the G4 slash S, what we want to do is we want. Excuse me. Um, what we want to do is we want to get that um, get that confirmed as being captured. So we want the glide slope to be captured on the FMA, and then after we've got that, what we're going to do is we're actually going to dial the altitude here on the FCU up to three thousand feet, which is the go around altitude for Inverness. So you'll notice it's at 2000 just now, that's where we intercept the glide slope. So after we intercept it, we set the altitude up to 3000 feet. But as I said, we have to make sure that the autopilot catches the glide slope first before we do that. So the procedure that I'm going to use is going to differ slightly from what you will see in the Aerosoft manuals. That's because, you know, during a go around procedure, obviously you've got two pilots in the cockpit in real life. so. Both of those pilots can, you know, the, the pilot in command will actually fly the plane and navigate the plane, whereas the pilot monitoring will do a lot of, you know, flip, be start flicking a lot of switches and reconfiguring the plane. So for this video, I'm going to kind of change things up slightly just to make it easier on you as a single pilot's uh, flight simmer. Um, I'm probably not going to be able to follow the go around procedure perfectly in this video um, and as I said I just do this for a hobby so I would recommend that you don't put too much pressure on yourself to follow the procedure exactly as well. So all I'm doing just now is I'm just getting the plane set up for landing. So we've got auto brakes, spoilers, we've got flaps too. So we're just about lining up with the uh, localizer there. Actually, what I need to do is activate the approach there as well. Activate both autopilots. So we've got localizer there. We've got glide slope is armed. 
so the aircraft is all set ready for the approach now so as I said before what we're going to do is we're going to wait until the glide slope is captured until this GS turns green here and then once we capture the glide slope I'm going to extend the flaps to full and then reset the altitudes on the FCU here to 3000 feet and then talk about the, uh, the various steps there for the actual go around and how to actually perform the go around procedure so we'll just give it another few seconds should be any second now that we'll capture the glide slope and we'll see the uh, status change here there we go, so glide slope captured so extend the flaps to full and then we'll reset the altitude to 3000 feet so for the actual go around procedure itself what I'm going to be doing is the uh, I'm going to initiate the go around at 200 feet radio altitude so as we descend towards the runway we're going to get some call outs here uh, you know just automatically at when we get to 200 feet I'm going to manually initiate the go around so to perform the go around the first step is to push the throttles up to maximum thrust so you push them forward into the toga position for toga being short for takeoff go around the next step after that is to retract the flaps to position 3 now the aircraft is going to pitch up quite sharply um, one to the, due to the natural aerodynamic forces and the physics of a, how an aircraft works and also the flight director is going to command us to pitch up quite sharp as well one to prevent us from speeding up too quickly and two to get us away from the ground at any hazards very quickly and then once we're kind of settled in a climb away from the ground then we're going to retract the landing gear now after I've done those three steps what I'm going to do is I'm going to re-enable the autopilots right click on the altitude and right click on the heading there so that will get us climbing 1, up to 3000 feet and that will get uh, keep us on the runway heading which will be 234 now as we be begin to climb away from the runway where it's actually going to be similar to a takeoff we're going to have full thrust enabled but at a certain height it's going to command us to reduce retract or reduce the thrust to climb position in this column here so we're going to do that and then as we begin two, to speed three. up uh, as we begin to speed up I'm going to retract the flaps and then do a couple of other housekeeping items there so disable the autopilot for landing so uh, as I said before 500. at 200 feet I'm going to whack the throttles up to full position there and then we're also going to pitch up quite sharply as well not sure why but I just hit a bit of turbulence here at this point 300 so 200, toga 200, 100 so above take off go around, so pitch up nice and sharp retract the flaps, one notch to position 3 positive rate, Approaching so we'll go gear two, up. Three. So now I'm going to arm the autopilot, right click on those two, so the plane is now flying itself. Makes it easier for me to do some extra actions now. So next we're going to get a lever climb indication here. So lever climb, so bring it back two notches into the climb position. Now the aircraft's going to start to pitch down and accelerate. So as we accelerate, retract the flaps to position two. Retract the flaps to position one. And then at that S speed there on the speed tape, bring the flaps up all the way. And now the aircraft will automatically hold the green dot speed here. So you want to be careful not to retract the flaps too quickly because if you take away all of the flaps too quickly that's all of the lift that the wings are generating and you might risk stalling the aircraft. So you can see we're at 3000 feet now already but there's a couple more steps I'm going to do very quickly. This would normally be done by the pilot monitoring. Uh, it's basically just a bunch of cleanup steps. So first we want to disarm the spoilers. Then we want to disarm the auto brake. And then we just want to turn off any lights that we had for landing. So usually that's just the runway turnoffs and the nose lights there. Okay, so now we need to look at 
uh, getting or performing the kind of the rest of the go around procedure and navigating ourselves back towards the approach from runway 23. Now, if you remember looking at the charts, the chart said to perform a climbing turn from 2,000 feet up to 3,000 feet and turn back to the Inverness VOR. As I said before, as a single pilot in a simulator, it might be a bit overwhelming to try and do all of those actions. You saw how quickly the aircraft climbed and how quickly everything progressed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... What I do personally when I'm doing the go around is actually do a, a sort of a makeshift uh, circuit or a pattern. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn right as per the procedure, as per the charts that we looked at earlier. Uh, but I'm going to turn around to a heading of 050 degrees, which is going to essentially be a downwind leg for runway 203. So the aircraft will turn around, and then once we're sort of established on the downwind leg, then I'm going to take the time to just reconfigure the plane, uh, do a couple of steps just to make sure that the aircraft is going to be set up and ready to perform the approach again. Okay, this is us now sort of established uh, on our heading of 050 degrees. You can see just down there we've got the runway and the airport there. And you can also see on the nav display it's in our about uh, a 1 o'clock slash 2 o'clock position relative to the aircraft there. Um, so that's all good there. So what we need to do now is think about getting the plane set up and ready to land again. So what we need to do is we actually need to drop down to the... Uh, MCDU down here and we'll need to reactivate the approach phase. Now you'll notice it will automatically flick onto the go around page so don't worry about that but what we need to do is just hit the soft key next to activate approach phase confirm it and then the aircraft will be set up or the uh, CDU at least will be set up and ready for the approach. So you can see it gives us our different V speeds there for the, uh, the flap extension and it gives us our V approach speed and our landing speed as well. So all we need to do now is just fly um, sort of what will ex essentially be an extended downward leg. Uh, you can see on the nav display we've got the dotted green line here which represents the approach for Inverness Airport, Rami 23 there. So all we're going to be doing is we're just going to be flying out in this direction for maybe another five maybe up to five to eight nautical miles away um, and then we're going to turn to the right and then re-intercept the localizer and restart the approach there. So one other thing that you need to be aware of uh, or one need to, thing we need to think about is that we're actually still at 3,000 feet so I'm going to bring that down to 2,000 feet. Oops, uh, I need to right click on that and then just begin a gentle descent back down to 2,000 feet, which is the altitude that we need to intercept the the uh, sorry the glide slope at. So we'll begin that descent just now, and the rest of the approach is pretty much the same as it would have been the first time you uh, you flew the approach. So what you'll need to do is turn towards the localizer and then begin to extend the flaps and then just get the aircraft reconfigured for landing. So I'm going to demonstrate that just now um, and uh, just to show you how, how it would be done. Okay, so I just cut the video there just to save a bit of time, but you can see we're now just about to reach 2,000 feet there, but you can also see the glide slope diamond is active again on our landing system display there. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that that is above the, the sort of the midpoint marker there. So as we fly further away from the airports, that diamond is going to continue to rise, which is what we want. Okay, so I think by the time I do a turnaround uh, to reintercept the the, uh, the localizer, that should be. Yeah, we should be able to intercept the localizer before we intercept the glide slope there. So. I'm going to turn to the right now, so we begin approaching the localizer once again. So turn to a heading of about, ooh, let's say 180, should be good. You can see on the upper ECAM we've got our landing memo automatically pops up again, which is good, that's what we want. Okay, so now that we're 
now on going to turn to a heading of 180, which should bring us back on track to intercept the localizer. What I'm going to do is extend the first stage of flaps just to help the aircraft start slowing down. And the, the secondary effect of that as well is it also makes the aircraft turn a little bit tighter as it's losing speed, so um, that helps as well. So you can see we're now on a, a good angle to intercept the localizer there. Uh, what I'm going to do at this point is also hit the approach button there. Activate both autopilots. And then go on flaps 2 now. Just have the aircraft slow down a bit more. So we should be hitting the localizer around about the same time that we're hitting the glide slope. So uh, now that we're settling onto the localizer, I'll go land the gear down. Then we'll get all our lights back on. We'll uh, set the auto brakes, we'll arm the spoilers. And then just as we hit the glide slope again, we'll go flaps to full. And that's the aircraft. Now reconfigured for landing, and uh, yeah, hopefully this time we'll make the good landing. So there you go. So that was an, um, a demonstration of the go around procedure. I hope that helped. Um, as I said, a lot of things happen very quickly. It is actually quite a difficult thing to perform as a single pilot, or, or perform perfectly as a single pilot in the simulator. So um, as I said, this is a hobby for us guys and girls. So. Don't put too much pressure on yourself performing a perfect go around. Uh, just do the essential steps that you need to to make sure that the aircraft climbs safely away from the ground and uh, and then worry about navigating after that. So um, there you go. I hope that video helped. Um, as always, I want to say a massive thank you to my Patreon supporters. I know I've got a couple of people who have joined very recently, so thank you to you guys. It really does mean a lot to me. And uh, of course, thank you everyone for watching. So until the next time, thank you for watching. Take care out there and I will catch you all later.